my channel. Today I want to share with you guys some new information we learnt about Strange World from a recent D23 article. First up, I want to discuss the beginning of the film. As the film begins, Searcher has rejected the vocation of his famed explorer Dan Yeager, becoming a farmer in Avalonia, which has grown prosperous through a magical plant named Pando. Searcher is a treasured member of Avalonia after having discovered the plant-based power source, which provides energy to the entire community, and is something he rescued from a long-ago mission with his father. However, when the Pando crops start to wither, he must abandon the life he chose to go on a perilous expedition to a strange world beneath their planet's surface. So basically this plant is a natural power source, similar to wind and solar power in the real world. This could result in the film having an environmental message. This theory is further supported by a quote later in the article stating that the film is about humanity's role within the greater environment. Secondly, I want to talk about the initial setting of the film Avalonia. It is a valley surrounded by mountains so steep that any explorer who has tried to climb out has never returned. This is probably how Searcher's dad went missing. One location in Avalonia is the Clay family farm, and the inspiration for this was Don Hall's family farm in Iowa, where he was raised. This proves that this film is about Don's family and childhood. This farm is big and green with lots of fields, corns and soybeans. There is also a geometric rhythm to the landscape. The style of Avalonia was described by the creative team as chonky. This means that it is built substantial, chunky and large. For instance, the columns in the front of the clay farm are huge. Thirdly, the article gave us some new information about the strange world in the film. It is beneath Avalonia, meaning that this is a journey to the center of the earth situation. The Strange World is one of the largest environments they have ever made at Disney Animation. In fact, it was so large that Sean Jenkins, the head of environments, said that when they first built it, Disney Animation didn't have computers large enough to show the whole world. The team had to then try to figure out how to get the most on the screen that would show the richest world, from the little blades of grass all the way to the biggest structures. Fourthly, we got some cool information about the three-legged dog in the film, Legend. Bernie Madison, a Disney legend and storybook artist, suggested in a story meeting that they needed a dog. He said, you're creating such a wonderful world, but you need something grounded in reality. You need a dog. And that is how Legend was born. Bernie's nickname at the studio is Legend, so the dog is named after him. The dog apparently steals every scene he is in, which is typical for a cute animal. Finally, I want to talk about the animation style. During early dialogue and physicality tests, Don Hall noticed that the look the animation team came up with was reminiscent of films Disney was making around World War II, such as Peter Pan and Sleeping Beauty, causing the co-head of animation Amy Sneed and her team to start looking deeply at those films and more modern films, such as Treasure Planet. They also looked at the recent films of Encanto and Raya and the Last Dragon, which have animation based in naturalism that tends to focus on the sincerity and complexity of human movement. The final animation style is modern Disney performance with a post-war Disney approach. Anyway, that is all for today. Like this video if you liked it and please subscribe. It would mean so much to me. Bye now and have a magical day.